You don't need a luxury kitchen to prepare gourmet meals. My name is Dennis. I live in a mobile home in a trailer park, and this is my kitchen. Every once in a while, I like to do something totally different. Push the envelope. It's the only way you're going to learn something new, right? So I've got this recipe that I want to try. It's lasagna in duck sauce. And it's from this Italian cookbook that I enjoy because the author always makes me laugh. He thinks the Italians were first at everything, like the Garden of Eden was really in Tuscany and Adam and Eve were really Italians. Okay, I made that last bit up. <laughs> Anyways, this recipe, already I'm solving problems with it. For example, one of the procedures is you got this duck, right? And you have to cook the duck in the sauce so every five minutes you got to turn the duck, turn the duck, turn the duck, so that you're cooking it all the way around evenly in the sauce. Well, why not just cut the duck up and arrange the pieces in the sauce and cook it all together at the same time? I mean, okay, the Italians may have thought of it first, but it took a good American Yankee to solve the problems. <laughs> I made myself laugh. Um, <laughs> One of the other things that I don't like about the recipe is you're supposed to strain the sauce afterwards and then discard all the solids, including the duck. Well, duck meat is too delicious to throw in the trash. So when the duck meat has cooled down enough that I can handle it without burning my fingers, I'm going to debone it, reserve all the meat, and I'm going to use that in my recipe. Now I'm going to do this over two days. So today we're going to make the sauce. So let's get started cooking our sauce. I put the liver aside. I'm going to retain this because I'm going to use this in the sauce later. But right now I want to section this duck. I'm going to use a pair of poultry shears because that's the easiest way to do this. You can cut right down through the bones and all. Okay, so there's the duck opened up. And then I'm going to cut alongside the backbone because I can't cut right down through it. So very close to that backbone, cutting through the bones. I'm going to remove the wing from the breast. I don't care how f cleanly this is done. When I'm sectioning a chicken, I always work very carefully to not, for example, damage the breast meat. But I don't care because I don't need the pieces of meat all nice and beautiful. I just need to section things up. Right between the thigh and the breast, I'm cutting through the bones. There's my breast meat right there. And there's the drumstick and the thigh. And I'm going to leave that all as one piece. I'm not going to section this into two pieces. And again, I've sectioned it pretty cl cleanly. So there's the drumstick meat and the thigh meat right down in between it and there's my breast meat right there and it has the back attached so that's going to go into my bowl and that's all there is to it to section the duck these can now these pieces can lie flat in the pan while I'm cooking my sauce I don't have to keep rotating the duck rotating the duck rotating the duck I have in the meantime heated up a very large, my largest cooking pot. This is a, an oval enameled cast iron dish. And I put about a quarter cup, 60 milliliters of olive oil, regular cooking olive oil, not extra virgin, in there with some butter. And I want to brown these pieces in the oil. I'm going to do two, maybe three at a time just to get this stuff nicely browned. That'll 
improve the flavor, the browning will. While my duck is browning, I have to chop up my vegetables. I'm going to dice these fairly fine, starting with my onion. I have my own way of chopping onion that I believe is safer than the way the chefs do it on TV. They cut the onion in half and then work toward their fingers. I don't like to draw the knife in toward my finger, so I quarter it, cut down through it, then flip it 90 degrees, cut down through it again, like so, and then cut across to get my dice. Here's another thing that's amusing about this recipe is the author is very particular that the vegetables have to be diced up fine, but we're not making a ragu. All of these will be strained out of the sauce later anyways, so I don't know what the importance is, but here we are. Dicing things up kind of fine. So the celery, I'm just going to cut these into long strips. I'm not going to get too fancy with this. And then cut across, and there's my dice. I had two carrots, one onion, and I've got four stalks or ribs of celery going into this sauce. As you can hear, there's no more sizzling. I have finished browning all of the duck pieces. I set those aside. I'm waiting for that pan to cool because I'm going to skim off some of the fat. In the meantime, I'm chopping the leaves from 12 sprigs of parsley. I've pulled the leaves off. And I'm not going to get fussy about this because, again, a lot of this is going to get strained out anyways. I love prosciutto. And I don't know why, but it smells like roses to me. I'm going to trim this fat off. And I suppose I could throw that in the pot for flavor. I'm going to cut these into long strips. Just cube this up. Okay, so I'm going to add that to my chopped vegetables. There's all my duck pieces browned. I'm heating some water to boiling on the stove because I need to peel some tomatoes. If you're not familiar with that, you boil the tomatoes in the water for 15-20 seconds, just enough to loosen the skin, and then they're a lot easier to peel. I have five large Roma tomatoes here. The total weight among all of these is one pound, or 454 grams. T to make these easier to peel, I'm going to just cut an X in the bottom of each tomato, and that way when it boils, it'll be easy to, for me afterwards to just peel the skin off. So there's my water, come up to a rolling boil. I'm going to lower my tomatoes in two or three at a time, and let those boil for, it only takes 10 or 15 seconds. Basically, you're just cooking the tomato flesh right under the skin, and that makes the skin lift off really easily. So now, starting where I cut the X, you can see how easily this skin peels off. It just practically falls right off after boiling for only 10 or 15 seconds. To seed these tomatoes, just cut right down through the middle of it 
to expose the seeds, I get in there with my knife and just cut along this white part to separate the seeds. And then they just lift right out. You can squeeze them out too if you want. It doesn't matter with this stuff because these tomatoes aren't going to be like part of a salsa or something. They're just going to end up being coarsely chopped, put into the pan with the other vegetables and once everything is cooked any solids will be filtered out anyways. I'm heating my pot again and I'm going to return my duck pieces to this pan. You can see the brown bits in the bottom of the pan the fond. That's one of the reasons why you want to brown the meat is because those brown bits, that fond, will add flavor to the sauce. I'm even putting the neck in there because the neck is going to yield some flavor. Alright, so there's all my duck pieces back in the pan. Here's all my chopped vegetables and my chopped prosciutto. I'm going to grind some black pepper in there. I'm going to put a good pinch of salt in there. I have my two cloves of garlic to work in. Just going to use my garlic press. That's two medium to large cloves of garlic. And then I want to grate some nutmeg in there because fresh nutmeg just goes so well in a lot of these sauces in which there's meat, whether there's beef or lamb, in this case duck. Okay. And then I've been thawing two cups of my homemade chicken stock. I'm not going to put all of that in there. Just going to run some of that in there, about a cup, maybe three quarters of a cup right now. And I'll let that come to a boil. I'm going to be covering this and cooking this for close to two hours. So as I need more stock, I'll watch it. And as I need more stock, I've got the stock here. I'll continue to add it. You don't need to do this, but I made my own pasta dough so I can roll my own lasagna noodles. You can use the lasagna that they sell in the store. I'm going to seal this up and put this in the refrigerator so it'll be ready for me to use tomorrow. In the meantime, I've taken the heat off, turned the heat off under my sauce. I'm going to separate out all the solids, keep the meat, and then I'm going to reduce that sauce a little bit more because to me it's still a little bit too watery. I want it to be like a sauce. Alright, it's day two. You could have done all this in one day, but I decided I was going to do this over a couple of days. So, as soon as I get my apron tied on here, I want to show you what I did last night after I turned the camera off. I need this. I need this. And I need this. There we go. First of all, I vacuum sealed my pasta dough. So I'll be ready to work with this today. Check this out. I took all the meat pieces out of the stock soup sauce that I made. And then I sat at the kitchen table because I was simply just too tired to stand and I deboned all of the meat. I shredded it up, but I'm probably going to chop this up kind of fine to use inside of my lasagna. 
And then this is my broth. What I did was, or my sauce, it looks like a broth, and I'll explain that when I get there. But what I did was I set up a sieve and a bowl, and I strained everything to strain out all the vegetable solids because I don't need that. I nibbled on a few pieces of prosciutto, and then I put my sauce in the refrigerator to let the fat come to the top and congeal so I can strain that off. And that's the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to spoon off the fat and get rid of that. The original recipe said to leave half the fat in it. I don't think that's going to be healthy. I just as soon get most of the fat out. So let me next start straining my or skimming the fat off my sauce. So what I need to do here is just skim off this fat You're not going to be able to get off every molecule, but that's all right. All right, I'm happy with that. It's not, as I said, you're not going to be able to get every molecule off. I mean, you could scrape it, scrape it, scrape it, and take a little bit off here and there, but I'm satisfied with that. That's enough. I've got a pot heating on the stove here to reduce my sauce. to break this up because it's all gelled and this will melt when it gets warm and then what I want to do is reduce this down a little bit more but to be honest I'm just not happy with this because it's more like a stock and how much can you reduce this down? If you reduce it down too much, it's going to turn into a syrup, not a sauce. And I understand why. When I was reading the recipe, and even when I was working yesterday, I thought, really? One pound of tomatoes to sauce an entire dish? Enough to feed eight or nine people? A lasagna? Doesn't make any sense. I want to chop up the liver that was in the duck. I re reserved this and set this aside. And I'm going to chop this kind of fine, reduce it down quite a bit. And I'm going to add this to the sauce. Waste not, want not. Why toss the liver out? This will add a little bit more flavor. It'll add just some depth of flavor. You won't really know that it's in there. You're not going to taste the, the sauce and go, oh, there's liver in there. But it'll just add a little more depth to the flavor. Okay. All right, and once I get my sauce reduced down, I'm going to add that to the sauce and cook that. So while my stock is concentrating, reducing, I'm going to chop this meat up. I want it smaller. I mean, if I were just going to put this over the top, then fine, or along the side, Shredded meat would be fine, but I'm thinking of working this right into the lasagna. I can tell by the ring left in the pan that this is reduced down a little bit. I didn't reduce it down to half, but maybe it's about two-thirds of its original volume. So I want to add the chopped liver. And stir that in and I'm going to cook this for about two minutes just to make sure that liver is cooked and then I'm going to add the meat this is all of my chopped meat I've got a lot of meat now because I'm doctoring this up in process I don't know how much sauce I want to add so I'm going to measure it one cup at a time and put it in there and see what it looks like 
And when I think I have a nice bodied sauce, I mean that meat is going to add nice body to the sauce. So that's one cup. I'm going to do a second cup. And then again, I'm going to reduce this down because the sauce isn't the thickest. And I would like fairly thick sauce for my lasagna. Yeah, see, that's beautiful. I did taste this, by the way, before I put the sauce in. You, you can't taste the liver, but you can tell there's something there. See, that just adds a little bit of depth to the flavor that I really, really like. I'm going to raise my heat back up here, bring this back up to the boil. And I'm just going to reduce this down until it's a little bit thicker. I want you to see my sauce here after I've thickened this up. Look at how beautiful that is. See, that's not soupy at all. I maybe simmered that. I shouldn't say simmer. That was over medium heat. I boiled it pretty well and I just stirred it often to make sure that it wouldn't burn on the bottom. And you can see there's no sticking down there, no scorching. I probably cooked that for maybe a good half hour to thicken that up. And just as a correction, I shouldn't say correction, but an addendum to those in metric nations, the two cups of sauce I added were about 475 milliliters. Okay, I'm getting down to the final stretch here. My sauce is done. So now I'm going to start shaping my pasta. I showed you this yesterday. This is my homemade pasta dough. You don't need to do this. You can buy the lasagna, the dry lasagna that they sell in the store and just boil that up according to package directions. I'm using homemade because I've done this before and I think it's kind of fun. So I'm going to be shaping that. I've got a large skillet of water on the stove that's just coming up to the boil because I'm going to boil my lasagna and then I'm going to immerse it in a bowl of cold water that I have with some ice in it and then start assembling my lasagna in a glass baking dish. This is 13 and a half inches by 9 inches or 35 by 25 centimeters. I'm going to cut off a piece of my pasta here. I'm only going to do this like one or two sheets at a time. Set that aside. Pasta, or lasagna rather, I believe is the largest flat noodle made in Italy. And in this case, I'm not going to have fluted edges or anything. I just want to roll this. Need to get this out of the way. And there we go. A little bit more. Yeah, that's better. I'm just going to flatten this up a little bit. Because I want it to be wide and no longer than my baking dish. Almost the full width. That's pretty close. Actually, on that end, it is. All right. And that's a little bit too long, which is okay because I want to trim these odd edges off anyways. I can actually work those into my next piece of pasta. And then I'm going to put this in my boiling water and boil this for only about 30 seconds. And if you wanted to, you could... Well, here, let me show you. You could fancy this up a little bit by giving it fluted edges. Nothing wrong with that. Right? So there's my lasagna. My first piece of pasta is cooling in the water. So I want to just spread some of my sauce on here. And then this is very wet from the bowl, but that's all right. So that'll give you an idea what I'm doing. Got my first layer of pasta in there. 
spread some of my sauce on there. Not a lot, because I don't want it to be thick with sauce. To me, the real flavor of this dish is going to be the meat and the pasta, the lasagna. A little bit more, and that should be enough right there. And then you're going to need about 8 ounces or 227 grams of freshly grated Parmesan or Romano cheese. I'm getting to the last of my pasta now. So I did the smaller pieces so that I can make it look more like a traditional lasagna. Beautiful. That is just beautiful. Okay. Now, I've got plenty of sauce left over, which is what I wanted because I'm going to really cover the top with sauce. I have in the meantime been heating my oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 200 degrees roughly Celsius. That's the last of my... <laughs> I'm getting excited about this. This just smells delicious. It looks delicious. Cover that right up to the edges. Like so. Gosh, that looks beautiful. For some people it's cars, for some people it's lasagna. What can I say? All right, and then I've got plenty of cheese left over. I'm going to put a really healthy garnish of cheese on the top. One Italian, or maybe it's several, Tuscan, for sure, methods of finishing lasagna is to make a balsamella sauce, which is the Italian version of bechamel, which is a, a white sauce, a cooked white sauce. And then they cover the top with that, and then cover it with breadcrumbs, and then bake it. I'm going to go with more of the Italian-American version, more like my mom used to make when she made lasagna. The only difference is she never used duck. Okay, so there is my finished lasagna. My oven has beeped. It has come up to temperature. I'm going to bake this, again, 400 degrees Fahrenheit, 200 degrees Celsius for 20 to 25 minutes, and then I'll be taking it out of the oven and letting it rest for 15 minutes before cutting it. Okay, there it is, out of the oven. This has had time to sit for 15 minutes, so now I'm going to be cutting into this to see how good this tastes. So how I would plate this. Let's put a nice big block on a dish. You could cover that with additional cheese if you want. Maybe a little bit of fresh chopped parsley. And there it is. I've been cooking for two days, so I'm so anticipating this. Incredible. Oh, <laughs> you can taste the duck. The pasta is fantastic. The sauce is fantastic. Oh, it's so good. Yeah. Perfect. Excuse me, I gotta go enjoy my lasagna with duck sauce. For a printable PDF copy of this recipe with step-by-step -step photographs, visit the White Trash Cooking website and look on the home page or in the recipe archive.